And this is another Cardinal's Nest here on HBC TV 25. This is the show where we talk St. Mary's University athletics. I'm the faculty athletic representative, Dean Beckman. This is our sports information director, Donnie Netto. And we've got Alec and Anthony back again. Alec Rude, Anthony Pasquese. They are what I like to affectionately refer to them as our St. Mary's student sports analysts. I like because, that. Uh, Sounds yeah, good. Yeah, it's a good title, right? And, and really, that's what you do because you help us with the play-by-play -play and the commentary uh, during our live sporting events. Uh, Anthony, you've also got a, a, a YouTube show that you do that sort of analyzes St. Mary's sports, and I know Alec is a regular guest on there, so, uh, so you know all about St. Mary's athletics. This guy here knows all about St. Mary's athletics, and what we're going to do on this show is not analyze one sport. We're going to take a look at all of the winter sports and kind of get you up to date on where things are at as we head into uh, the holiday season and uh, look ahead to what to expect in 2020. So let's start off with men's basketball. Donnie, um, they are off to, uh, at least in the recent future, a historic start. Yeah, right? it's, been, it's been a great start for them. And, and I, I think that, uh, you know, the, the buzz around campus, I know these two can, can attest to the buzz is, is just so positive right now on, uh, around the men's basketball program. And uh, the fans are starting to the build in terms of crowd uh, crowd participation. And, uh, you know, we're hoping that that continues. And they've got uh, two, two games before the Christmas uh, break actually hits. They've got uh, McAllister for the final MIEC game, and then they've got a game against Martin Luther. So two big games for them. Be really nice to see them head into Christmas with a 6-1 and one record. But I know from talking to Coach Fano, he's really trying to not necessarily downplay the success, enjoy where they're at, but make sure to keep the guys grounded because as he continues to point out, they only won eight games last year. And uh, so they need to make sure that they, that they keep their heads on them and make sure that they realize that there's a lot of work ahead of them. And if they're going to be successful, they got to continue to do what they're doing. And that is, is, is put their best uh, performances on the court every single time they take the, take the court. Alec and Anthony, eight wins last year. They're already up to five. And, and as Donnie pointed out, you can't take anything for granted. But, uh, but there's a lot of excitement uh, about this program, right? Yeah, yeah off to a 4-1 and one start. That's their best start since the 2010-2011 season in which they started 8-1. and one. They finished that year 9-16. and 16. So uh, something tells me this year is going to be a little bit different. Uh, they have one of the best players in the conference, and he's playing like it. That's Eli Cave. He's third in the country in three-point percentage uh, in Division Three. So if he continues to shoot like that and dunk the basketball, he's got to be up uh, in the leaders in dunks as well in the conference. If he keeps playing exciting basketball, I think this team has a really good shot of continuing their success. Yeah. Well, one of the things, no. sorry, Alex, no, one of the things that I've, I find really interesting with Eli, and uh, you know, not not having a huge basketball background, but the guy's six five. Yeah. And he's really more of a guard mm -hmm. than he is a, a post player. Now, he certainly can play the post and does a good job at it. But like you alluded to, he is, he is so deadly outside that he's so hard to guard because you don't have – you know, you don't have six, five people that are able to, mm -hmm. to step out like that and be able to guard somebody like that. Well, I saw the highlights of all the dunks and stuff. He just goes right through it. Like, he has the tall, and then he also has the speed. Like, all the highlights they had on their Twitter, it was like, Eli Cave Dunk, Eli Cave Dunk, another Eli Cave Dunk. And no one was touching him. He was just going out with these. So I think the speed uh, is also helping with that height as well. Yeah, Donnie, you totally hit on it. If you do have a 6'5 guy, he's not going to be as fast as Eli Cave, and Eli's going to run right by him. If they, do have a, if they do have a fast guy that can cover the outside, well, Eli Cave's going to run right by him and dunk on him. So it's just he's almost getting to the point where he's unguardable. He's one of those players, and at least since we've been at St. Mary's, there hasn't been a player like that in almost any sport, maybe Brandy Blattner. Uh, but other than that, you know, he's a prolific scorer and really an all-star in the athletic department. You know, and what's interesting to me is is that he's just one piece. Mm. And, and unlike years past where they may have a player who, who is close to that caliber, but not anything around him, that supporting cast hasn't been there. This year, you know, they can go 10 deep. They can, they can take Eli off of the court and really not be hurt like they would in the past. And I think that that's another part of why this team is so good is that they don't have to just rely on Eli. He was averaging 22, 23 points heading into Concordia and was held to 18. Mm -hmm. But yet, you know, they still won by 14. And it was because they have other people around him that can pick up the slack. Yeah, I, like looking, I was announcing the women's basketball game last week, and I think the vibe's just a little bit different between this team. Like, they were all sitting, 
together. Just they looked all mentally even focused at the women's game. Maybe in years past, you'd see them act a little different. Maybe start getting up and cheering for the girls, but all of them are just sitting nicely in their spots, watching the game, and they're all sitting together. You don't, you didn't see that in years past. So this team, I think the environment too. They know they're for real, and they know uh, the school is kind of counting on them to be that winter sports team. You know, we recently had Kevin Gleason on the show, right, KG. And uh, uh, Anthony, do you think, you know, while you talked about Eli Cave and his on-court leadership, do they look to uh, Kevin as sort of that off-court stability that kind of keeps them all grounded a little bit? Yeah, for sure. I mean, a senior leader who's fought through adversity in his career and missed an entire season to a knee injury. Uh, he, he's not very vocal on the court. Eli Cave, I think, is the vocal leader on the court. <laughs> right, but right. I'm sure uh, someone who's been through that much has a lot to say, and the guys definitely listen to him off the court. Yeah, no, no question about that. And so if we were to, say, use the top of Donnie's head as a crystal ball <laughs> and, and look ahead to uh, 2020 uh, and, and the spring now as, as they get a little deeper into conference play, how far can this team go? I would say, I think the conference semis would be a good goal for them. Uh, they beat St. Olaf, who is normally a uh, playoff team. They were projected fifth in the conference. So I think that's the main goal. St. John's and St. Thomas are they are the real deal. Augsburg's the real deal. But if they can find a way to join those three, maybe other teams in the conference semis, I think that would be unreal. Obviously, again, we only won eight games last year. Let's just try to make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Slow down, slow down. But I think my prediction, I think they could make the – be in that 4-5 or five matchup and maybe make the semis? I think I, I'm not slowing down. My expectation, <laughs> I'm not kidding. My expectation is hosting a playoff game. And anything less than that, I'm personally going to be disappointed, uh, which is crazy compared to last year. But they have done so much this year in terms of just stride after stride after stride, beating the teams they should beat by 15, and competing with the teams that they should compete with, like St. John's. And we'll see it again here today against McAllister. If they come away with a 15, 20 point win tonight, I mean, it just proves again that they're the real deal. So Donnie, um, we found out now that Anthony's a really hard man to please, right? Uh, we had Coach Fano on the show recently. What do you think he would say to that question? Is he a, a take it a, a game at a time approach, do you think, at this point? I think he'd go, Anthony! <laughs> <laughs> oh, he does it all the time. <laughs> no, I think, you know, I think, I think both of you are right. I think that, you know, I, I always, I've been around a long time. I remember the eight and one start, and I remember him winning one game after Christmas. But this team is different. Yeah. I think the key for this right now, and I, what Coach Fano would say, and I hopefully can I did a good enough foot stomp, but I think I think he would <laughs> agree more with Alec in that, you know what, our first goal has got to be let's get into the playoffs. Okay, once you get into the playoffs, there's only six teams left. Anything can happen, and then you're right. Okay, I think that they have the talent to compete with really with anybody in the conference. And once you get to that six, any of those six spots, then it's fair game. Then it's a one game, all you gotta do is, is win. And uh, you know, I think that what they need to focus on is rather than worry about, hey, let's get in the top four, let's get in first. Yeah. Hopefully they can do that with two weeks left in the season. Then we can say, hey, let's get that to the fourth seed or the third or fourth where you can host a, a, a home playoff game. Heck, why not get to the top two and get a bye? But I think that right now they've gotta focus on on uh, getting to the playoffs. They've only played five games, and uh, you know the, the conference games they've played, St. John, St. Olaf, Concordia, okay? Two of more teams right about where we're at in terms of preseason coaches poll. The loss was to St. John's, nationally ranked, you know, MIC power for, for several years now. So let's see when we come back from break where you've got Augsburg and Gustavus and Bethel in that first week, and so, after that, I think it'll really kind of show where we're at. And I really think that there's no doubt that easily it could go two and one in those three games. Sure. You do that, now all of a sudden, Anthony's prediction becomes a little bit more, more realistic. But basketball, just like a game, basketball is such a, it's so much momentum. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at when we play Concordia. Concordia scores the first six points. Play Luther, they scored the first nine points. This team just needs to stay focused, do what they can do, and let the chips fall where they may. So I think optimism, that that's going to be the key. Yep, optimism, but a step at a time. And, and it's right. exciting. I mean, it, it's it's hard not to want to do what Anthony says and be, you know, hey, why not be in the top four? We haven't had a basketball team that's been like this in years, and it's fun, and it's it's exciting, and it's fun to know that we take the floor against any team in the conference 
And there's an expectation to win. Heck, there were there were years where we step on the court with a St. John's and we just hope not to be by like twenty. Right, right. You know, so that in itself is is what's exciting is is this team can do a lot and it can go it can go far. Yep. It's just a matter of I think really kind of pumping the brakes a little bit and keeping it all in perspective. Celebrate the wins as they come and not be looking too far ahead in terms of what could could happen because you just don't know uh, what the future holds. All right, there's Donnie taking all of Anthony's <laughs> uh, Let's switch it over to the women's side now. Um, you know, they've had a tough start from a win-loss standpoint, but really some exciting games, yeah. and they are, like, literally right there in those games. What's it going to take to get over the hump? Uh, I mean, it's just better play. It's as simple as that. Uh, it's These games are games that if you ask any one of those players, and I did, I asked Shaley on Sunday on the squeeze, you know, I asked her, were you supposed to win those games? And she said, absolutely. That's what's so unfortunate about this early start to this season is they got off right, right off the bat with three straight opponents that they should have beaten, and they haven't. Mm -hmm. They're 0-3 in the conference, and if they don't win today against McAllister, we're really going to have to start asking some questions about what can we expect from the rest of the season. Uh, we're not there yet. 0-3. There's a lot of time left, but it's been a really rough start. Yeah, I did the double overtime game when they lost to St. Kate's, I believe, and they were down one literally the whole game. And then four minutes left, they get by, up by eight, and then it goes away. And they had so many chances to win it. It's just a little thing. If they would have hit a couple more free throws, they would probably have won that game. I think we were talking about it after. But I think, I don't know when this is going to air, but McAllister tonight, uh, I think McAllister is one of the lower teams in the conference. And this could be a, a self-esteem kind of builder tonight, as they should hopefully rebound. All right, and so, Donnie, you look at the women's side of thing, and while the talent is certainly there, this is the first time this core nucleus has ever played together. And so it's early in the season yet, as Anthony pointed out, um, and they're right there, so you got to feel it's close to happening. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, it's it's – you look at the last two losses, and one in double overtime, the other one by five points late in the game again. I think, you know, they're, they're still trying to learn. you got to learn how to win. And like you said, the nucleus of this team is really kind of new yeah. as, a, as a group. And so, you know, there are going to be some bumps in the road. When we had Coach Foliani, he talked a lot about this new style that they're playing and that the people aren't used to playing this way. And, and I think that right now they're seeing – you know, they need to see the progression to, to where they want to get to. And I think that, you know, it's going to come. I think the McAllister game is important. I think that their schedule is very tough. Yeah, you, you, there's, no, there's no denying that this has been a very difficult schedule for them. And you look at the future, uh, before, before the holidays, they've got Wartburg mm -hmm. uh, next Friday. That They're a number 10 team in the country. Then they've got uh, Stevens Point and Whitewater at the Just a Game Tournament in Wisconsin Dells. One of those two is nationally ranked. So it's a tough, it's a tough stretch. I think that... Just building some confidence. It, it, you know, the McAllister game is big in that in that respect, and and I think that with this style, they need to make their shots. Mm -hmm. You know, right now they're 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 shooting under forty percent from the field, and you can't do that. You know, you've got to be up in the upper forties, fifty percent to to be successful with this type of an offense. And and I think that uh, you know they're certainly giving teams fits with the, with the press and the, and the fast pace but uh, you know they've got to be able to to knock down their shots when they do they make it tons of stops mm -hmm. defensively they look awesome but uh, you know they've got to they've got to do a better job of making uh, taking advantage of those of those turnovers right. that they're forcing and, and turning them into points on the other end all right we're having fun on this show Alec <laughs> you know how I know that because time is flying. Uh, we're already at our break here for the show so we're going to take a short pause and when we come back men's and women's hockey uh, analysis. That's next here on the Cardinal's Nest on HBC. Maybe we should have a dance off. Well, let's try that again. Nailed it! <laughs> Bitch and Rides, new episode Wednesday at 9 on Motor Trend. Or start your free trial of the Motor Trend app to stream every episode commercial free. I have tremendous respect for the families who come in to talk to us. It's extremely painful for families to have to relive their tragedies. But it is so important that victims' voices aren't silenced. And that's why they come. Hi, Teresa. On the Case with Paul is on, all new, Sundays at 10, only on ID and ID Go. And we are back. Welcome back. 
to the Cardinal's Nest. Good thing this is not a political show, <laughs> or we'd be here all day with these guys. Uh, Dean Beckman, Donnie Netto, Alec Rude, Anthony Pasquazi, as we're taking a look at the winter sports. We touched on men's and women's basketball already. Now, hockey. Donnie, you like to ask the hockey question, so we're going like to turn it over to Donnie. And I know, Anthony, how much you love hockey. My only question for you, Anthony, is, is how many people are on the ice at the same time? <laughs> uh, ask him what ice no, it is. He always gets mad when I ask. There's 12. There's 12. <laughs> there's right. two defenders. There's three offenders. And then there's two goalies. <laughs> or there's one goalie per team. Forwards D. Thank you. Forwards. That's the word. Last year, is it, last year he, annu he announced the game with me last year. It was me and him. And I joked with him. I said, Anthony, do you know what icing is? Like on the air. And he got so mad at me. He goes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. He, he, I bring it Sorry. up a lot. Now, oh, Anthony, if it yeah. makes you feel better, I sometimes get confused by the icing calls a little okay. bit just because of you know some of the, <laughs> yeah. the, the oddities of the rule. But uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, Alec, um, we, we were talking uh, kind of on the on the drive to the studio, uh, looking at the men's team, and and um, this last weekend really kind of has been a uh, a microcosm of this season. They they really struggled on Friday night, losing seven zero, and then they turn around on Saturday and come up with a huge five four overtime win, and and it really seems like. This team is, uh, is it, I mean, they're 3-1 and one in conference, which is awesome, but it feels like they're still trying to find their identity a little bit mm -hmm. with Coach Egan as their, as their uh, new head coach. Yeah, I think people are, some people are worrying. I, to be honest, at this point, I don't care about the non-conference at all. Like, they've lost, I think, every non-conference. Yeah. They've tied one. Yeah. But 3-1 um, and one in the conference against Concordia, who's projected fourth, and Gasebas fifth, five teams in the playoffs. So the preseason poll, those two teams are both supposed to get ahead of us. And we just won three out of four. And I don't care right now, non-conference or not, for a first-year head coach, uh, winning that, sweeping Concordia, they had a first-place vote in that on poll. On the road, too. Yeah, on the road. So, um, obviously, it's going to take a little bit more. They're struggling in the non-conference games, but that's the thing. They lost 7 nothing. They come back, get up 3 nothing, uh, give up the next four, and then the next two win in overtime. It's that type of team. Well, and, and I talked to Coach Egan, too, about the Gustavus 7-0 loss. He says that's one of those games where the final score is not indicative Hockey, of how we yeah, play, yeah. you know. So. Hockey, you can, once you're down 3 you you're probably not coming back. You know, right. it's, it's, what's, what's really neat right now in the winter seasons is, is Anthony, we were talking a lot about uh, men's basketball and how the buzz is there and the, and the crowds are becoming more, they're, they're building. Hockey's the same way. The men's team, uh, Teddy Bertos on, on uh, Friday night or Saturday night, and that was probably the most intense, raucous, fun atmosphere that I can remember since uh, we made the semifinal or the championship of the MIC playoffs several years ago. And, and I think it, the, the success of these teams in the winter is really starting to build. It's starting to grow on campus. And, uh, and the turnout for these games is really becoming more and more evident of that. That's just not men's hockey. Women's hockey, right. I said on the air, I thought from my stance and uh, the three years I've announced, I thought that was the most people at a women's hockey game. Yeah, Friday night was unbelievable. Fourth team in the country, they tie them. And I had to cover my like audio a little bit because it was so loud. And <laughs> I don't know if people could hear me. I couldn't even hear myself because a women's game, technically you don't get as many fans. Mm -hmm. But there, there was a lot of fans. The men's game was, that student section was full. It was packed. So it's it's fun. It's a fun sport. What do you think, what do you think right now is the... Uh, is the key to their success, especially in conference, uh, like you said, heading into uh, now that they're done with conference, heading into the break. Men's hockey. Yeah, yeah, men's. Yeah, um, I think uh, their defense, I've noticed last year, I kind of got on them on the air. I think they get too much up in the play, and then the other teams go down two on one. Uh, Tyson Liverance, Kyle Me, they're a really good D, but they also like to get up. And uh, for my scout, when I, when I see those guys do that, I'm like, you better get – back and you better help your guys because your forwards are too tired so I think they've kind of realized a little bit they have to get back their D and Tyson Leverance I said on the air I didn't call his name that many times but I said that's not a bad thing because that As means, a defender, that means right? he's yeah. staying back he's staying home and he's letting Kyle Mee the senior probably I think one of the best team in the conference mm -hmm. doing his work and Tyson's taking that role staying well back. the interesting thing with Kyle is is that you talk about how, and he's he probably is one of the best defensemen in the conference yeah. and he's becoming one of the best offensive defensemen in the conference as well five goals in in uh, you know basically in six games that he's played he yeah. was out a couple games with injuries so uh, you know they're getting production from a lot of people uh, you, you certainly have to look at the Stang brothers Tommy and, and Jack are, are really doing a great job and and uh, you know I think that they're spreading the wealth a little bit more this year, and I think that that also is a key to, to their success. I agree. 
That's, that's what you got? <laughs> what do you think, Al? I mean, I mean, offensively, uh, you know, they had to score five goals to win, and they and they did. And I, th I think that that's a key for them is, is offensively they've got a lot of firepower. Yeah, well, and the thing is, this year they're sticking with lines more. The, the Sting brothers and Ryan Sternitz are st uh, staying together. And then we've had some freshmen jump in that Magnavite first game. He had three points, and uh, obviously he's out right now. But you, the next guy's up, and uh, the top three lines, i say the fourth line maybe had more of a tough game, but the top three lines are all producing. They're all getting in there. And like you said, they're not getting really shut out besides the like Gustavus game. They're scoring goals, and uh, the Sting brothers and Sternitz are a big help to that. All right, let's flip it over to the women's side now. And uh, just like Coach Egan and the men, uh, Alec, they're looking for some Friday to Saturday consistency because mm -hmm. early in the season here, that, that really hasn't been there. Yeah, they have two splits, uh, one with Concordia, St. Kate's, and then they t tied and lost to Gustavus. But Gustavus, fourth team in the country. Concordia is a decent team. Uh, that splits I'm fine with. St. Kate's maybe should have swept. But, again, this team, uh, to get that fifth spot, it doesn't take – many points in this conference because so many teams beat each other, especially with the women's side. So right now I think they're fine, but like you said, they need to really figure it out. If you win at home or win on the road, then you got to come back the next day. You got to stay focused. I don't know what they're doing And it really but. seems to be the Friday, Saturday because yeah. Fridays, they've been very successful. They're, uh, what do we say, where they're two, three, and one in conference play, mm -hmm. both, both of their wins and their tie are on Friday night. And then their, their three losses are on Saturday. So they need to find a, a way to, to rebound from a, a success, you know, maybe it's maybe it's they get too high and then they come in and there's a letdown. But uh, you know, uh, Coach Coach Murray's got these uh, these ladies playing very well. Uh, like you said, that the, the, they play in front of a very good crowd, which is always fun to do. And and I think that you know, as we talked about with the new uh, you know new offensive schemes for Coach Foley, this is a new coach, and, and it's going to take a little time for them to uh, you know to get used to that. Now they've got some time off; they're not back in action until uh, uh, the first weekend in January, when they've got uh, Stevens Point and really got Marion. Marion. Yeah. And then uh, you know, for the men, I mean, the men go into uh, they head to New York. Uh, they go to Oswego, New York, in uh, the, the the end of or actually the first weekend in January, mm -hmm. and they play they play Oswego the first night. Oswego right now is is uh, ranked in the top ten, and then they'll either play uh, University of New England or um, uh, Williams, and both of them are ranked in the top uh, fifteen in the country. So it's going to be a tough tournament for them, but a great experience as well, getting to to, to go out to to Oswego, New York. No, oh, no question about that. And then and, and with the women's team. Um, how do you think, how, how's Coach Murray dealing with the layoff? Any, any different than what Coach Moore used to do, or what do you think? No, I think, I think it's about the same. Right now, that you know, you, do, you don't practice this week because they're going to focus on finals, just like these two should be doing. I know. And I know they're not because he's supposed to be in class. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, so, so they'll take some time off. I know they'll come back right around, you know, right after Christmas, and they'll, and they'll gear things up again, and they don't play again until that first weekend in, in January. So, uh, you know, they'll have a, a good week of practice, and, and I know that um, same with basketball players, they, they kind of like the breaks because they can focus on basketball and hockey. There's no school they have to worry about. It's just, it's just let's focus on this. Now, granted, uh, men's basketball plays two home games the first week they come back and, and we're on break, which always is kind of a bummer. But, uh, you know, it's, it's nice for them to be able to focus on, on just – their sport and and get back into playing shape and get back into you know getting ready to go and then and then it's all conference once we get uh, done with that first week of January they're going to be rocking and rolling with conference play and and uh, you know that's that's the important part Alec is right what what we do in the non conference really doesn't matter it's what what they do in conference and and uh, hopefully the weeks to come as we have these shows we're going to be talking about playoff runs for for mm -hmm. all four teams all I know Donnie is I and I know you agree with me on this point I'm glad they they don't have a New Year's Day game right. this year right. like they did I, last year I am happy about that <laughs> we were up in the rink on New Year's Day uh, Alec what have you noticed with the women's team that that's different this year com compared to last year now new year with the with the new coach Sarah Murray uh, for me, the 2D, Delaney Wolf and Allie Ryan, I think they're uh, our top two players from my thing, uh, my point of view. But last year they would split them up sometimes and have one go on the first pair, one go on the second pair. But Coach Murray, she likes to put those two together. And I think when you put those two together and then trust the other D to play more defensively, then you can trust Sim going offensively. I think Natalie Ryan's one of the best D 
I've seen in a long time at this level and doing that. And the women are getting, they're getting very good goaltending. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. Ari Ziakis had an outstanding game against uh, Gustavus in the tie. She had 44 saves, career high for her, which, is, uh, which was phenomenal. And, and uh, Jordan Keeley is doing a good job as well. And, and when you have that good goaltending, that, uh, that makes things a little bit easier. You know, they, certainly people can't, you know, lay off and, and figure that their goalies are going to take care of the, you know, take care of stopping 44 shots. I don't think you want to be giving that up. But knowing that if you do give up 44 shots and, and Gustavus managed only two goals, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty comforting as well. All right, just a few minutes left. Donnie, uh, how about a little swimming update here? Yeah, swimming uh, Rochester Invitational last weekend, uh, really a solid performance from all of our swimmers. They had 40 uh, career career or season bests, including uh, 11 that were all-time top 10 performances in, in program history. So really a, an outstanding job by uh, by our swimmers in a, in a very large meet. And I know uh, Coach Lowe is really happy with the way they performed. Now they're off again. They're actually off until uh, the second week in, in um, January. So they've got a big layoff here, <coughs> excuse me, which means that they've got to, uh, to really train to make sure that they're ready because they only have the Stevens Point Invitational. They've got a double duel against Augsburg and Hamlin, and then it's conference championships already. Right. So, uh, so they're, they're already gearing up for uh, toward the end of their season. And when we had Amber on the program a few weeks ago, one of the things you know, we she addressed that long layoff and said, you know, that they've got to get in the pool over the break. They can yeah, maybe yeah. take a week, but but Absolutely. that's about it. Absolutely. They got to get back. Uh, in. Anthony, one more thing, and I know you do know what the Stanley Cup is, right? Yes. Okay, just checking. Uh, if if uh, if you had one wish from Santa Claus, what do you want for Christmas? Oh my gosh, um, that's put on the spot. That's I have. I hope I don't get that next. Yeah, uh, <laughs> probably for the Chicago Bulls to make the playoffs. Oh, I thought he was going to say for us to host a home men's basketball game. Oh well, uh, I threw it out there. I gave you this bone, and you just let me in. I've got another about you. Yeah. Uh, hockey teams getting to the Mike Championship. Yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> I, what? I do have, what's, what's wrong with that? We've got a minute left. I've got to, I do have a question for Anthony. I know some of the indoor trackers are have already started. Tell us about that real quick. Yeah, so there's the Mankato meet. They do it every single year. I didn't get to compete this year, which is okay. Uh, they just take a couple jumpers, a couple sprinters, kind of like the cream of the crop, and they just kind of knock the rust off a little bit. I know Matt Boone came in ninth place in that meet. Sidney Klossler had a nice had a well. opening. Uh, fifth, yeah. Christian had a fifth place finish. Mm -hmm. Frankie Bacalars, I believe, finished in the top eight. So did Good to see Holman do well Jake in, Holman. in the shot put. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's been one of those that's kind of been right on the – right on the fringe of, of really breaking out, and it was good to see him have a good meet for that first one. And then an awesome uh, debut by Sean Curran yes, in the yes. weight throw, who he is actually eight pounds off of the SMU squat record, wow. uh, and he's wow. only a freshman. Jeez. So expect big things and expect Sean Curran to be in your write-ups for a long Sounds time. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, this is why we have these guys right. on. They That's are right. the St. Mary's sports analysts, and we're all a lot smarter now. So <laughs> Anthony, Alec, thanks for being on the show once again. We'll make sure we have you back on in the spring sometime. So. Sounds good. All right, that's going to do it for this Cardinals Nest. Have a fantastic holiday season, and we'll see you again in 2020. Oh, hell yeah. I O N. Submission. There it is! She's out, Donna. All hail the queen. Woo! What is that smell? If you smell what the rock is cooking. We got a new champion. Describe the best thing you ever ate. Uh, it's good. Woo! <laughs> Dynamite. Yes. Uh. Hashtag worth it. Ridiculous. OMG, OMG. Whoa, wham. What? what? That's what I'm talking about. Wait. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> All new. The best thing I ever ate. Monday at 9. You're gonna need sweatpants. Cooking channel. Stay hungry. This Christmas, world class cake and sugar artists battle to make the most incredible. It's perfect. Edible. Well done. Unexpected Christmas displays ever. 70. 70. Layers of cake. The technique is unbelievable. How did they do that? We're turning Merry and Bright into an epic Holiday Wars fight. Oh my God. This is what Holiday Wars is all about. All new Holiday Wars, Sunday night at 9, only on Food Network.